kid. Seriously. <laughs> All right, welcome to the opening show, even though it feels like we've been here before, for Star Wars in Review. I am your host, Maya Madrid, along with my hetero life mate, Luke Neitzel. We're here today to talk a little bit of Star Wars news, amongst other things, answer at least one question, and then we're going to give a review of everybody's favorite animated flop, The Clone Wars. So, first of all, how you doing, buddy? I am not doing too bad. We are done with dry runs. It's time for the the real thing. It's the real we, deal now. We can get in there and do this thing. No, I'm I'm doing good. It's been a it's been a good week for me. I've been. We're gonna talk it. about that. I wanted to ask for those of you who uh, don't know. Unfortunately, Luke Neitzel is a Minnesota Vikings fan. And, uh, his team. We may have won in dramatic fashion. May have won in dramatic. I don't really want to talk about this, but I did want to get your 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 opinion. I mean, if how are you feeling? Oh, that's amazing. I Did you watch it? No, of course you didn't. not. Okay. So, I'm a Packer fan. I don't want to watch that crap. Well, some people just watch playoff football or whatever. But a common thread you would find among, I think, all Viking fans is after that game happened, someone you know who's a Viking fan saying, that doesn't happen for us. That happens to us. We are the team that loses those type of games on last second plays. Just to give you a picture... We're up 17 to nothing in the third quarter, and I'm texting with multiple of my Viking friends, and none of us are talking about the NFC Championship game. It's all, oh my gosh, there's way too much time left. <laughs> it's Everyone has this pessimism building because it's just been beaten into us over the years that we will find a way to blow what should be a sure thing. And then we basically did in what would have been historic fashion, which is typical for us. I actually tweeted out at one point, uh, with the, right before the 10-second play, right before the snap, I tweeted out, for the sake of my Packer fan cousins, who are going to try to rub this in my nose, I tweeted out, great season, Vikes, sad way to end it, but we're proud of you and I'm so excited for next year. Hit send, they snap that ball. Right field and left, Marshawn Lattimore, 12 yards from Adam. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side, caught by Diggs. Stay oh, away, got low. Oh my God! Oh, 30, no 10, way. touchdown! Oh. Are you kidding me? Go finish! It's a Minneapolis miracle! Step on Diggs! And the Minnesota Vikings have walked off on the New Orleans Saints. It's a 61 yard Minneapolis miracle! <laughs> And I am screaming out of my mind. I have never experienced anything like that. We've certainly been in more important games and games that were really gratifying. I mean, Randy Moss in the playoffs, mooning the Packer fans. Yeah, I remember. I seem to remember that. That was in the obnoxious phone call that you made afterwards. That, yeah, that was it. That was a good feeling. I was at the first playoff game in '98 where we just trounced the Cardinals on the way to being upset in the the NFC Championship. But I've never experienced a win that was like that for the the stage it was, for how disappointing it was turning out to be to then turn into the Minneapolis miracle. I mean, that's. Oh god. That does that does not happen. So to be on the the good end of it for once was amazing and uh hopefully it'll cushion the blow of when we blow it this weekend. That's what I was just going to say. Um I'm really happy for you and looking forward to uh hopefully the Vikings doing what they do in Vikings fashion. There's a long way to go. Well, especially in this one because everyone's picking the Vikings to win because the Eagles lost their quarterback. So it's it's totally setting up for the we can't fail. We're doing too good. We're going to host the Super Bowl at home. I feel like this is how you are making sure that you don't jinx yourself. You just go into the negative, negative, negative. You know, obviously, if it was a Packer fan, we'd be all excited and way overconfident. So, as the Vikings fans, you're coming in low uh, to avoid the uh, the disappointment. I can respect that. One other thing before we get started in earnest, and I'm going to try to put a picture up on Twitter. Again, if you uh, or want to follow us on Twitter, you can at Kids Seriously. But I wanted to tell you, I watching... The prequels over last weekend and with my daughter, Kaboom. And Boom was was taking a real interest in Shmi Skywalker. Okay. And I know it's of all random things. And she was looked like on the verge of tears when Shmi died. And when she it just really affected her more than I ever expected anything from Star Wars to affect her. And she disappeared into the basement about an hour later. Come down to see what's up. And she's playing with her Lego. She had taken one of those drink holders from McDonald's 
and flipped it over. And then she had glued some of her Legos into a funeral scene for Shmi Skywalker. So I don't know what that says, but I know it says something. And then when she was done with the funeral, she murdered all the ants and stuff around your your basement in revenge? (laughs) She's a little dark. I mean, her favorite movies are things like Hotel Transylvania. And I do think that there's, you know, she's going to grow up to be a gothic cheerleader. I don't know if there's ever been one, but there's only one boom. She could be the first. (laughs) Well... There you go. She's always kind of the first and everything. Let's talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi, Mr. Neitzel. So, it's, it's making tons of money. When I wrote this, it was over six million, 600 million domestically, another 675 internationally. It was down at one point to 90%. Critical approval on Rotten Tomatoes jumped up another, another point. Cinema score was an A. And it seems widely beloved by a great number of people. Some publications are projecting that it might even crack the 10 in all-time revenue if it hasn't already. But it's not all good news. In a similar way that The Force Awakens sort of had a a honeymoon period and then began to get criticism after the initial adoration, it has only a 49% Rotten Tomato score for fans, which is nearly 40% less than Force Awakens and lower than all of the prequels. It came in second in the Chinese market with under $30 million, finishing $60 million under the second week of The X-Files, which is a movie, I don't know, it looked pretty funny. Actually, E-X-Files, not, E-X, yes. not David Duchovny X-Files. Right. Um, it's 53% of what Force Awakens did on its opening weekend, and it made less than Rogue One. So, what I'd like to know from you, Luke, is how do we rate The Last Jedi in terms of success, and perhaps more importantly, what will we think of this movie in 10 years? Well, from a financial standpoint, I think all of the talk of it not being a financial success is kind of a joke. I just want to say, I don't think it's not a financial success. I'm saying that it it may not be as big of a financial success as was expected. And and I recognize fully that that is very different and sort of splitting hairs. Sure. It was never going to do what The Force Awakens did for a lot of reasons. It had been 17 years... 15 years, something like that, since the last Star Wars movie before Force Awakens. So the anticipation is always going to be higher than when we get a Star Wars movie every single year. It also had higher competition. Everything stayed away from The Force Awakens, but you've had successes like Jumanji that have come out to take away that family dollar. You also had Ferdinand, which is an animated movie, to take away the kids. The Last Jedi is longer, so you have less screenings. And it is darker subject matter, so it's going to be less mass appeal. I can tell you for sure that even though I love it, my son who went to it was bored because it was more character stuff and not enough porgs for him. I think that this movie will probably grow in adoration as it as time goes on. I think it's the type of movie where almost almost like the prequels to a certain extent where younger generations are latching on to them and liking them. I think the farther we get away from this movie, the more people will like it. I wasn't alive when Empire came out, but I, I got the impression from articles I've read and, and listening to other podcasts that Empire had a very similar reaction as well, too, where people people questioned it. Now it's universally thought of as the best one. So I think this movie's legacy is going to be fine. The China thing has to be disappointing for disney but it's still the highest grossing movie it's gonna top 1.3 billion most likely and as you said move into the top 10 so i don't think that they're happy with what happened in china but i don't think they're freaked out about it i think they would still be continuing with ryan johnson as we know they are if they were worried about the success of his movies because they were very quick to pull the plug on trevor o after he had a bomb movie and a bad relationship they were very quick to pull the the trigger on the people who were doing Han Solo and that wasn't working. So I think if Disney was really freaked out about it, we would have heard that Ryan Johnson is already out instead of being basically propped up as kind of their guy. True. Oh, I can see what you're saying. I also have some, you know, rather than comparing it to The Empire Strikes Back, I'm worried that it's going to be remembered more like Return of the Jedi, where when we were kids or like when we first saw it, we kind of loved it. But then in retrospect, similar to how people feel about The Force Awakens, there's a sort of souring in it. And the reason why, if you go back to uh, what people, the conversations that people have had, there are lots of issues between Mary Poppins and Leia, between all the feelings about people have about Luke, even though I like what they did with Luke, some of the plot holes about like the jumps and, and there's just, there's so much, the, the entire Canto Bite situation, everything 
uh, with Finn and Rose, the way that they treated Poe, all these things just keep lingering and lingering and lingering. And so I do think it could be remembered like The Empire Strikes Back. But I also think it could go the other way, too, where we, we lose. And I, and I simply don't know at this point. I do know that it feels like there's more attempts to try to defend it than any other Star Wars movie that I've seen. Where people are actively, uh, people associated with the movie are actively trying to defend themselves. And I, so I guess we'll see. I think it's fair to say it's the most polarizing Star Wars movie we've ever had. You seem to have less middle ground people than you do on most of them. It seems to be more of a a fight between the people that have different views. And I think that's playing itself out. I also think it's important to see what happens with the next movie. That's a good point. Cause whatever happens with that is going to kind of set how we feel about this movie, how we feel about force awakens. Once we can look at, a, at them as a whole, we'll have a better picture and we'll kind of know where this one falls. I think that all of these movies that we've had recently are going to be remembered more fondly than the prequels. Will they be remembered as, as well as the original trilogy? maybe probably not but i bet they fall somewhere in the middle yeah that's fair